Uh, so to begin with, I'd like to first thank the organizers for inviting me to give this presentation. Today I'm going to be talking about a single-step column purification process for the influenza H1N1 virus using an ion exchange chromatography resin developed by Bayerad called Nuvia HPQ. On this slide, I'm showing the basic structure of the influenza virus. It's spherical and contains seven proteins, as indicated. The hemagglutinin, or HA protein, and the neuraminidase, or NA protein, are the ones responsible for the various subtypes. Now, of course, these days with the coronavirus pandemic, the influenza pandemic of 1918 is on most of our minds. Millions of people were killed in that pandemic. These days, the impact isn't that severe, but it is still severe. About three to five million people annually come down with severe illness as a result of infection with influenza virus. And of those, about a quarter to a half million people die. Now, historically, there are at least several methods that have been used to purify viruses, ultracentrifugation, ultrafiltration, and chromatography. Some of these methods are not, uh, let's say, as manufacturing friendly as one might want. Ultrafiltration can introduce shear losses, as can ultracentrifugation. Chromatographically, uh, size exclusion chromatography is not easily scalable, uh, with apologies to my colleagues who do, in fact, run 100-liter uh, SEC columns. However, ion exchange chromatography is quite scalable, and it's manufacturing friendly and can be used easily in a CGMP environment. Challenges in virus purification include uh, variable recovery, low purity. In the case of many viruses, their structures and integrity can be somewhat labile, as well as uh, scalability, which I indicated a bit on the previous slide. So uh, a few uh, introductory remarks about Nuvia HPQ. Uh, it's designed for the purification of large molecules such as IgA and IgM, as well as things like viruses and VLPs. The resin has an optimized pore size for easy accessibility of these large species and therefore absor absorption of them to the resin. This is accomplished by having not only the, op the optimal pore size, but also the appropriate internal spacer length, as well as the appropriate ligand density for efficient binding at high flow rates. Uh, as a result, the resin has high dynamic binding capacity at relatively fast flow rates without excessive back pressure. It is a strong anion exchange resin. I've shown the functional group here. It's a quaternary amine. Particle size range is about 30 to 53 microns. And the dynamic binding capacity uh, for thyroglobulin, which is, as many of you know, a very large molecule, is greater than 50 mg per mil at 100 centimeters an hour. Here's a cartoon of what the uh, Nuvia HPQ bead looks like. You can see that the pores are designed to have to allow easy penetration of large biomolecules. The surface extender length and density has been optimized for maximal binding. I want to now move into uh, a case study that was performed by uh, a third party, which I'll be referencing at the very end of the presentation. In this case, uh, the purification was a single-step chromatographic uh, procedure. Starting with the uh, culture suvernatin, there was a clarification step followed by a benzonase treatment, which I'll discuss more later on, and then using Nuvia HPQ in bind loop mode. Now, benzonase is shown in orange rather than in blue for a particular reason, which I will come to in a few minutes. For quantitation of quality outputs, uh, we use a hemagglutination activity for viral quantitation as well as droplet digital PCR for viral quantitation of the viral MR of the viral RNA. Impurities were uh, quantified by SDS Page and Western Bloss to give kind of a visual picture of what things look like, as well as an ELISA for host cell protein, qPCR for host cell DNA, and dynamic light scattering to determine the aggregation state of the virus particles. Now, I'm not showing the initial scouting that was done for binding conditions on this resin, uh, just to save some time. We used a Foresight Nuvia HPQ 1 mil column at a flow rate of about 120 centimeters an hour. And what I'm showing you here are the different equilibration buffers that were tried based on the DOE scouting. What we found was that 20 millimolar tris at pH 7.5 with 100 millimolar salt gave us the best viral RNA recovery 
as well as pretty good host cell protein uh, removal. And so this was used as the binding condition for the studies I'm going to be talking about in subsequent slides. So to begin with, we took some uh, some harvest, loaded it on this column at 100, about 120 centimeters an hour, and then eluded with a continuous sodium chloride gradient. And what you see are two pools, which we called pool one and pool two. Pool one had uh, hemagglutination uh, activity recovery of about 25 to 30 percent, viral RNA recovery in the same ballpark. Pool two had a small amount of HA recovery uh, or HA activity, but a much larger recovery of viral RNA. Uh, the total, as you see, was far from quantitative. Uh, we did not test the flow through. Um, so what we concluded from this is that pool one contained mostly H1N1 virus with a significant amount of HA activity. Pool two contained probably aggregated virus with low HA activity, but of course a lot of viral RNA. We decided to elute subsequent steps with 590 millimolar sodium chloride based upon the position of the, uh, of the various fractions in the gradient. And we think that perhaps the aggregation in pool two or the suspected aggregation may have been caused by the high salt concentration at that point. Again, we didn't analyze the flow through, so uh, don't worry too much about, the, quanti about the, the mass balances in these steps. So uh, again, some work that I'm not showing indicated that the optimal flow rate for, uh, for binding was about 80 to 85 centimeters an hour. What I'm showing you here is the step elution based upon loading at that flow rate, and again, the two elution pools at 590 and 1.5 molar salt. What you see here is that we had a HA recovery of about 80% and viral RNA recovery of about 70 to 75%, so those two match up fairly well. The 1.5 molar salt strip had a small amount of HA recovery uh, as well as viral RNA recovery, and overall the mass balance was quite good. Uh, the lower flow rate, we think, not only preserved HA activity, but it may also increase binding capacity. So this was the flow rate that was used for subsequent steps. Now, one thing that I mentioned uh, earlier in the, in the workflow was that there was a benzonase treatment that was used in these earlier experiments. We wanted to see if benzonase uh, was actually needed because the, the virus eluded at 590 millimolar salt, which is uh, somewhat below where one would expect DNA fragments to elute. So what this slide shows is a comparison of uh, a variety of quality outputs, either with or without benzonase. And what you can see in the left-hand uh, uh, graph is that HA recovery, HCP removal, and host cell DNA removal were the same with or without benzonase. And the right-hand panel shows that the viral RNA levels were about the same with or without benzonase. So the conclusion from this was that since we didn't see any differences in the subsequent uh, 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 experiments I'm going to show you, we didn't put benzonase treatment in. So this was a, we were able to eliminate this from the process. So we want to look at dynamic binding capacity because, of course, that's going to be critical for determining how big a column you need. And again, we use the Foresight 1 mil column. During loading, 1 mil flow-through fractions were collected and analyzed for uh, viral RNA by droplet digital PCR. And what we ended up finding was that the binding capacity was about 5.8 times 10 to the 11th viral copies per mil of resin. So in this slide, uh, without any further elaboration, I'm simply showing the optimized protocol that we had uh, for purification. I do want to make a couple of remarks. First of all, we did load at the maximum binding capacity of about 5.8 times 10 to the 11th of viral RNA copies per mil of resin. The pH was 7.5 throughout, with the exception, of course, of the, of the CIP. We had a fairly long wash. And what we found was that you really did need at least 10 column volumes in order to wash out all the host cell protein contaminants. And this was operated again at a flow rate of 84 centimeters an hour, where we found the, the maximal binding capacity of the best recovery. So this is the, the first optimized attempt for purification, again, loading at 5.8 times 10 to the 11th copies per mil of resin. 
adherent vero cells were spun out, supernatant was taken, it was microfiltered, um, and then applied to the resin using uh, the conditions I've indicated. And what you see is the just the elution part. So there's the elution at 590 millimeters and the strip at 1.5 molar sodium chloride. Now what you see in the elution peak is a double peak. Um, this may be separation of filled from empty capsids. We don't know because that wasn't something that we uh, were looking at in this experiment, but it might be interesting to go back and see if that's actually the case. In any event, as you see, we had uh, roughly equal amounts of viral RNA and HA activity recovery in the 590 millimolar peak with, again, a much smaller amount in the strip. When we looked at the aluate on SDS page and Western blots, what you see in the left-hand panel is the uh, molecular weight markers, of course, culture supernatant, and the 590 millimolar uh, sodium chloride aluate. And so it's clear from just looking at the gels, there's been a tremendous purification of the virus compared to the culture supernatant. The arrows uh, in red indicate where the various viral proteins migrate, at least the ones that you could easily see on a gel. And it's clear that the hemagglutination protein is present in the 590 millimolar aluate. If you look very hard, uh, you'll have to take my word for it, you can see a smaller amounts of HA1 and HA2. If you do an anti-HA Western, uh, again, the HA protein shows up. And again, if you strain your eyes, you can see very small amounts of HA1 and HA2, with again a residual amount in the, in the 1.5 molar strip. And if we use an anti-influenza an anti A uh, antibodies, what you can see now is the neuraminidase or NA protein, as well as the M and NP protein. So this is exactly what you expect to see if you're purifying influenza virus. So that looks good. Moving on to dynamic light scattering. We use dynamic light scattering, or DLS, to measure the size of the particles in the aluate with the hopes that they'll be monomeric. The left-hand panel shows the results from nine independent experiments where you can see that the average size of the particles was 128 nanometers, well within the expected size range from monomeric influenza virus. Of course, you also see a very small peak of material that's larger in size. These results were quantitated on the right-hand side at the top, but you see that the vast majority of particles, about 10 to the 10th per mil, were in fact monomeric, whereas a much smaller fraction, between 10 to the 7th and 10 to the 8th per mil, were aggregated at 441 nanometers. When these results were quantitated at the bottom, what you can see is that the, the monomeric particles represented 99.8% of the total amount of particles in the aluate, with the aggregated material at 441 nanometers representing only 0.2% of the total material. So not only was the material coming off of the Nuvia HPQ column fully active, but it was also essentially fully monomeric. So uh, to summarize uh, the purification, if you look at the, the top panel, what you see is that the recovery uh, of hemagglutination activity and viral RNA were about, call it 75 to 80 percent, maybe we average those two and say it's an average of 77 or 75 percent, which is really good for a single-step purification of a virus. Um, if you go all the way over to the right for just a moment, in green, you see that the log reductions of host cell protein and host cell DNA were about one and a half and four logs, respectively. Now, in the middle, in blue and orange, are the actual values for, uh, for host cell protein and host cell DNA per mg of HA. And what you see is host cell protein was about one mg per mg. Host cell DNA, DNA was about 0.3 nanograms per mg. And if you look at the bottom panel, um, straight down, what you see are the, the results that have been reported in the literature for five different purification processes using a variety of different methods. And the data indicate that the, our single-step purification on Nuvia HPQ provided better host cell protein uh, levels at the end as well as better host cell DNA levels at the end compared to any of the other processes. Um, I've indicated where you can find these papers in the, in the reference column on the right. And at bottom, there's a link that you can go to to look to see what the recommended levels of, of various impurities are uh, in the EMA. And uh, I'll leave that for your further perusal later on. We want to look at productivity because, of course, purification, uh, a good purification is one thing, but 
if you can't purify very much of it at a time, it doesn't really help. So we compared the purification that we got with the published purifications using Cytiva's Capita Core 700. Um, if you look at most of the columns, basically what you see is that the, the yield is about the same, you know, give or take. DNA clearance, host cell protein clearance, roughly they're all about the same. Nuvi HPQ has about twice the host cell protein removal compared to Capta Core. But if you go all the way over to the right, what you see is that the productivity of Nuvi HPQ is substantially higher than Capta Core 700. It's about three to four times higher. Uh, which is which is really exciting because it indicates that that uh, relatively small amounts of new HPQ in a column can purify fairly large amounts of harvest coming out of a reactor per day. So uh, I want to make a couple of uh, summary points from this talk. First is that I think we've shown that new HPQ provides high virus recovery with very good impurity removal and very good productivity. Um, impurity removal is certainly enough for, for clinical trials if that's what if that's what one is looking to do uh, in some aspect. And the productivity is quite high and perhaps could even be optimized further. Um, the current process, as I've shown it, does not require benzonase. Of course, that's something that you have to test out individually yourself, but the elimination of benzonase uh, simplifies the process in a number of ways uh, that we can talk about uh, at some point if you want. And based upon the data that we were able to find in the literature, HPQ single-step purification provides results that are superior to the other published workflows. I want to acknowledge the uh, uh, Wei Zhang, Dui Tianta, and Kailing Chu, who are members of the Downstream Processing Group at the Bio Bioprocessing Technology Institute in Singapore. They are the ones who provided the data for the case studies, and we thank them very much for their absolutely tremendous efforts. I want to conclude by just noting some process chromatography resources that are available at BioRad. In terms of methods development, we have a variety of uh, experts worldwide that will uh, either talk to you on the phone or by email or even come to your site to actually do work to support your purification development efforts. Uh, we have a process development group here at Hercules and as well as groups elsewhere that can look at your whole process if you want us to, to possibly reduce or optimize steps and reduce or optimize various manipulations between steps. As I sort of indicated you know, in the last 30 seconds, we have a global support network uh, that goes worldwide that can assist uh, in addition process uh, transfer and regulatory procedures. I myself do about 100,000 miles a year, and I pack columns up to about 1.8 meters at various customer sites, uh, as well as providing them with lots of information for their regulatory filings. You can request samples from uh, Biorad of Nuvia HPQ or any of our other resins at biorad.com slash resin sample. And in the left, I've shown some of the formats we have, one and five mil, uh, pre-packed columns, these are our foresight columns, as well as smaller robo columns and 96 well plates that, of course, larger formats are, are available. If you have any questions, uh, you can always contact your process specialist at process at biorad.com. And this reminds me to say that if you ever have any questions about any of our resins, they're not working the way I said they would, they're not working the way you want them to, they're working okay, but you want them to work better, you just have some questions, please, please, please contact us so we can help. If you don't call or write, we can't help. Uh, that, you know, obviously, that's, that's just the way it is. And in addition, this is the probably the biggest and the best part of my job. I love doing this. Feel free to contact me directly at any time. Um, and it also helps to save my job because if nobody calls, I don't have nearly as much to do. Uh, I want to thank everyone for their kind attention, and I will now open the floor to any questions that you might have. Thanks a lot.